Hey everybody, Steve here again in the New York store and we're going to do a segment of our vintage videos series and today's segment is going to be on Slingerland and much like we did with Ludwig, with Ludwig we focused on the era of the 50s through the 70s and I think we're going to do the same thing for Slingerland because otherwise there's just too much material here. <clears throat> Slingerland and Ludwig had some similarities in that uh, particular era of the 50s and through the 60s in terms of the type of shells that they used to construct the drums. Slingerland drums were fabulous instruments, <clears throat> been great instruments all along, and in the 50s they were still enjoying popularity from Gene Krupa moving through and into the 60s. Buddy Rich was a Slingerland endorser in the later 60s into the 70s, Louis Belson was. And they made great drums. In the 50s, the drums were very much uh, like the Ludwig shells in that they were a three-ply shell uh, using mahogany in those shells with a very rounded bearing edge that we call a baseball bat type bearing edge. So the sound of those drums in that era was very, very warm and fat and full. And this is basically the kind of instrument where you're generally seeing larger sizes, 9 by 13, 16, 16, 14 by 22s or 24s, 5.5 or 6.5 snare drums, and generally in that middle to low tuning range where those warm, round uh, mahogany shells and rounded bearing edges really, really sing and are very robust. So that's primarily what you had during that era, and they had great great sounding drums, great shells. You kind of fast forwarded a little bit into the 60s and the shell composition started to change to basically a maple shell, a maple poplar maple type shell. Again, still three ply with reinforcement rings and still the rounded edges, but with more of a maple core than the mahogany core. And uh, right around the mid 60s, Slingerland went into uh, a new uh, era for hardware and they started to change their hardware somewhat, especially the tom holder. They changed from a rail consulate to a setomatic, which was a really well-made holder that allowed a lot of different positioning. Great, great, um, great holder. So the hardware innovations were there. <clears throat> the shelves were great. And uh, as things progressed through the 60s, they were very, very popular drums. Again, Buddy Rich was an endorser. Louis Belson started endorsing in the 70s. As you got into the 70s, the shell was still the same up until around 1978. Around 78, they went to an all maple five ply shell with a 45 degree edge and no reinforcement rings. Again, with music being a little bit more, uh, a little louder, needing a little more cutting power, uh, you started to see the shell composition change very much like what Ludwig did right around the same period of time. So the innovations were made to kind of keep pace with uh, the needs of the music industry at that point in time. Tremendous, tremendous products. Uh, the 50s stuff is great. My particular favorites are the mid 60s uh, through the late 70s. I think that product is incredible. They sound remarkable. I own Buddy's uh, last Slingerland endorser kit, which was from 77, and that kit is just amazing. And I've got a personal playing kit from that 70s era that I wouldn't part with for anything. So my recommendation to you would be to check out the Slingerland drums from the 50s through the 60s and through the late 70s. After the late 70s, Things started to go south, the company was sold, and that's another whole sorry story, but that era from the 50s through the late 70s produced some incredible, incredible drums, and I think you'd really uh, benefit from uh, experiencing that and seeing some of those. Uh, you can always reach us at maxwelldrums.com on the web, and you can always reach me uh, by email at vintagedrums at aol.com. Uh, let me know how you like these videos. Let me know if you have any questions. I'd be happy to answer them personally for you uh, going forward. Thanks.